This is The Warrior's Journey, a podcast designed to equip, inspire, and bridge the gap between military members, veterans, their families, and our communities. The Warrior's Journey is an interactive online community where warriors and their families can find resources and encouragement to navigate the unique challenges they face and presents the message of faith as the path to finding wholeness in everyday life. For questions, resources, and to find ways to get involved, visit thewarriorsjourney.org. Hey, everybody, this is Kevin Weaver at the Warrior's Journey Podcast. Welcome back. Uh, if you're listening and or if you're doing the video cast with us as we've started this out and we're right here in the middle of our partner series. And so welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us. And as we come together today, we are here with another what I would call uh, a very high-level premier partner, Brian Cheever, who is the CEO of Clear Creek Golf Car and Utility Vehicles, uh, basically headquartered in the Springfield area, Ozark, uh, and then the surrounding states, you know, it's amazing. So, Brian, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Kevin. Uh, you, you bet. You know, and you guys, uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, your your business is amazing. Um, the people that work for you are amazing. Uh, and I'll just do with all disclosure. We'll just start this by saying uh, we we wanted to do this partner video uh, kind of partner week, if you will, or partner emphasis because I think a lot of people think. You know, well, the Warriors journey. You guys are doing this. You're doing this. You're doing this. Oh, that's so great! You know, you're 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 in front of all these people, active duty military, uh, active duty military people, and and also veterans. And you know, man, they go 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 go. And it's like, yeah, you don't understand though. I mean, it's really important for you to realize that it wouldn't happen if we didn't have partnerships like you guys. And your partnership has been, I mean, above and beyond. I mean, I I wake up every day and just you know, I, I marvel and I'm humbled you know, by your willingness to come alongside us, not just with the resources that you give, because, because you know, the the giving, the actual, sure. you know, financial resources that you guys have given have been really second to none. You're, in, you're at the top of the list here. And, uh, but even, I would say more importantly, I, I almost want to say as importantly, but more importantly is, is the passion that you guys bring to the process. So, uh, so let's just talk about you a little bit. I like to learn, you know, we could have our Listeners just uh, hear about, you know, Brian and, you know, what brought you to this place. Yeah. And and most people don't really understand golf car, not golf cart. We can get into that. Let's start yeah, there. Yeah, or you know, let's not start with Brian. We can get into that. So, yeah, tell us about tell us about Brian. Yeah, born and raised Marshfield, Missouri, 20 miles down the road. And uh, went to college and graduated from Evangel here in Springfield. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, I was a, a job hopper for First 15 years or so out of out of college, never okay. stayed anywhere for more than a year and a half. Uh, just kind of burned out quickly, wasn't doing what I was passionate about. Um, and then God opened a, a door, um, answered an ad in the paper, the Springfield News Leader, it was long enough ago that that's where he still went for for job searches. And it was uh, said golf sales. And honestly, I thought it was going to be selling like advertising on tees or <laughs> whatever golf balls something you had, you had really cheesy no really didn't have any idea what it, what it was going to be about interesting and uh found out it was selling golf cars and i actually had two job offers at the same time one from clear creek and one from walgreens and i thought walgreens was a better career path because of their growth and the yeah. opportunities down the road top but actually top five companies in yeah, the nation really they're yeah, big they're huge. Ra- rapidly growing back then yeah yeah um so i actually took the walgreens job first and went to work for the first day at Walgreens, and I knew within 30 minutes I'd made a mistake, but I had to finish the day first. So I finished the day, and then I called Mark Ringenberg, who was the owner of Clear Creek at the time, and said, man, I screwed up. Um, is my position with Clear Creek, is that offer still good? And he said, we haven't done anything else on it yet, so come in tomorrow, and we'll talk about it. Well, I said, well, i got to finish my work day at Walgreens first before <laughs> I can come in, so can you meet me after work? And, nice. and he did, and uh, the rest is history. That's nice. So when you started, what <clears throat> excuse me, what was that like? I mean, you you started just just as a like a I, I mean I think of selling golf cars. It's is it similar to like a dealership where you'd sell vehicles, or is it is that similar? Well, you know what was what yeah, was that? somewhat similar. We were in a non retail location. We're kind mm-hmm. of in an industrial park. Um, I was actually hired to do golf course sales, but we also had walk ins that come in buy one for their lake home or farm or or whatever. Um, at the time, we had seven or eight employees, a pretty small operation. Wow. And Clear Cricket had been around for about 15 years at that time. But really hadn't ex- it, it experienced some growth at that time, but hadn't really taken off yet. Um, but yeah, that was hired to do golf course sales, and uh, that's what I did for the first seven years there. And then I got an opportunity to 
um, kind of become a managing partner with the company. And uh, Mark was stepping out then, getting ready to retire and move on to other things. He wanted to slow down. So I, I began to run the day-to-day business at that point in 2007 mm-hmm. and uh, did that for the next 10 or 12 years until Mr. Jerry Marty came along in 2019. I actually, before that, I had tried to buy the business, but I didn't have, it's a very asset driven business. You got to sure. have a pretty, pretty good balance sheet to, uh, yeah. to do what we do. And, uh, I didn't have that. And, and honestly, I look at that as a blessing because I, I wanted to buy it at that time. And I was very disappointed when it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think in hindsight, that was a blessing. I don't think we would have been able to, I know we wouldn't have been able to experience the growth and do the things we've been able to do since then. But Jerry came into the picture in late 2019, Mm -hmm. and uh, again, a God thing where um, initially he and Mark couldn't come to an agreement on buying the business, Mm -hmm. and uh, Jerry had kind of stepped away at that point, but he and I continued to talk, and then we ran into each other at uh, an event in Orlando, Florida, of all places, and we got together and visited a little bit there and had a really good conversation. I encouraged him to tweak his his offer to Mark just a little bit Mm -hmm. and assured him that if he would do that, that it would it would meet Mark's qualifications of what he needed for the business. Yeah. And uh, we'd make it worth his while once he did that. And, and he took that step of faith and that's fantastic. Had a great partnership ever since. Yeah. That's great. Cause, cause I mean, you're not just working, you're also a part owner as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had some ownership going into that and then mm-hmm. uh, I've acquired some more since then. And good for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good for you. Would you, you guys are, I know blown and going now too, and, yeah. and lots of expansion and, now I know you're. Is it okay to talk about yeah, some states? Absolutely. You, talk about no, talk absolutely. about the expansion because I know it was originally just right here in yeah. Springfield, but now, man, you guys are in other states. So when I went to work for Clear Creek in late 1999, we had just the one location here, and then in 2003, we opened a second location in Rogers, Arkansas, mm-hmm. and that's all we had for the next 20 years, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, when when Jerry acquired the business, we went into Lake of the Ozarks first, and then uh, he's from Lamar, Missouri, so we opened a store in Lamar, which is just north of Joplin. Uh, from there, it was West Plains, and we kind of thought that's where we were stopping, but uh, then we had an opportunity to acquire the club car distributor based out of Little Rock, Arkansas, so we made that move. And uh, shortly, at, it seemed like after every time we finish one, there's another opportunity that seems to mm. pop up, and it's it. You know, we're not about growing for the sake of growing, but if it makes sense for us and for our customers, for our employees, then mm-hmm. um, we want to be good stewards with those opportunities. And just one after another's continued pop-ups, we acquired the the Arkansas business, and it wasn't long after that that we had opportunities in Oklahoma. Uh, so we acquired the golf car distributor based out of Oklahoma City, and that gave us Oklahoma City and Tulsa locations. Um, Fantastic. A few weeks ago, we acquired Ozark Golf Cars, which is our was a competitor of ours. He had worked for us in college. Mm-hmm. and uh, had a, built a successful business after that of his own. And he kind of lost his quality of life. He'd never been, taken a honeymoon. He had a four-year-old little girl he wouldn't wow. spend any time with, just working way, way too many hours as a sole proprietor of a small business often does. Yep. And uh, he approached us, and we came to an agreement you know, just a month or two ago, and he's come back to work for us now and bought his business. That's fantastic. And right after that, Wichita. So we just acquired yeah. 67 counties in Kansas, including uh, Wichita, and just think we got a great opportunity there. So that's like the whole state, isn't it, or, or we, close to it? We had nine counties, so we now have 76 counties. I don't know how many there are in Kansas, wow. but if you look at the map, we've got about 80% of the state now. I was going to say, yeah. Once you get past Wichita, you know that's uh, yeah, there's a, not lot much of, out a lot there. of driving and yeah. fence posts and cows. <laughs> and yeah. few, A few golf courses, but not many, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's literally there's counties that don't have a golf course at all, yeah. and most counties have one golf course right right so it's a lot of driving but so club car is one of your um you know basically one of your products and then easy go right it just you just pick that up yeah here. club cars we're a club car distributor and that's where mm-hmm. we've been since i think the business was started in the late 1970s yep and recently when we acquired ozark golf cars which is the gentleman i mentioned a minute ago that's come back to work for us he was an easy go and yamaha dealer so mm-hmm. we now have easy go at our five locations in missouri Nice. And we'll, we'll uh, keep Yamaha at one store, and that's the Clinton, Missouri store. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very good. And Yamaha, yeah, and you're not just doing golf cars. You're doing utility vehicles, uh, motorcycles, and off-road stuff. I mean, it's really, yeah. you guys have a broad scope of products now, too, We do. We, we never intended to get into the power sports or, or motorcycle business, but the building that we're in here in Springfield, um, it's one we've seen for eight or ten years. It's always thought it would be a dream location for us. Mm-hmm. Um, it was never on the market, or if it was, it was not on the market for long. You know, somebody would sell it within weeks, and we'd miss the opportunity. Mm-hmm. It was not on the market when we approached the the owner of the building, was Mr. John Youngblood, and uh, oh yeah, that's right, yeah. He, he was willing to have that conversation with us, and you know, I think God's grace upon the the whole 
the whole deal that the door opened and, and we were able to acquire that building, but it was a power sports dealership at the time. And he said, well, I don't really want to sell the building and have to figure out what to do with the, the power sports pieces. So he offered those at a very reasonable price, Kawasaki, Suzuki, and Yamaha. So we, <laughs> we got in the power sports and motorcycle business. And honestly, it's been a blessing. I mean, it's been been a very thriving part of our business. That's fantastic. Yeah. No, and it's such a great location right off of yeah. uh, 65 Highway. So this picture behind you here, uh, a great photo. This was your old location. Really, would you call that the original location? Or um, no? Right? When when I started working for Clear Creek, we we're actually on the southwest part of town. Oh, were you really? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I drove by there last night. In fact, so I just kind of wanted to see the building and hadn't seen it in years, and just. I'm like going back to your grandma's house 40 <laughs> years later, you picture this big house in your mind and you see it and man, it's a lot smaller than yeah. I remember. Well, that's crazy. But yeah, just kind of went back to our, our origins last night and drove by the old property. But this is one we moved to, um, gosh, I'm going to say like 2016 or so. We operated out of there for a couple of years. Yep. Yep. And that's yeah. where we met you. I yeah. mean, honestly, because our rented facility before we got into our new facility here, our actual, uh, you know, our headquarters building. Uh, was right there in, in front. You guys were right yeah, behind. And, neighbors. Yeah, just neighbors. And we, I remember we did our first golf tournament. We thought, you know, uh, Dan Beaver. You know, yeah. he he had a he had a, a connection to you, and he said, you know, we ought to get Brian over here because he's done so many golf tournaments and yeah. he's so wise in this. And you were so helpful, you know, just the in the beginning. And that that was kind of the beginning of our yeah. relationship. And that was back in 2017. Yeah, yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a few years. And and then you guys, these last couple of years, have done some great things. You've You've helped us uh, with a couple of vehicles uh, two years ago with a customized golf car that we raffled off, and then last year we did the did the is it is it the proper term to say the Razor? I always call it the Razor. Yeah, the, it's a KRX, yeah. but yeah, it's essentially yeah. like what most people view as or, or think of as a Razor. Right, right, and that's that was an amazing vehicle. Yeah, that's and, really uh, cool. Yeah, and then we all, we well actually raffled that one off, and we're getting ready to introduce a, a new one for this That's year. Right. We were talking about that yesterday. What we're going to do for this one? So yeah, really excited yeah. about that. We we typically try to introduce those at our gala, which yep. is coming up in May, and so uh, we'll uh, no pressure. You we'll know, be ready. I know you guys no, okay, we'll be great. ready. That's why <laughs> after the meeting Monday, I'm like, man, we need to make sure we're on track with that. So That's we had a awesome. conversation about it yesterday, and we're going to do another onward. I think is uh, yes, yeah, golf so cart. golf car. Yep. So yep. yeah, so uh, you know, I just you know, I know that we're we're somewhat in the in the beginning stages of this conversation, but I do want to say, you know, I, I can tell you, and we personally, um, not only have I referred many, many, many people to you guys, but personally, you know, my wife and I, we've never had a golf cart before. And, you, you know, do now. we do now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was about 18 months ago when we, we did that. And man, you guys were so great. And what a what a great experience. And we love it. It's, I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So I would just say a little, little plug. OK, so I'm going to do a, a shameless plug here. If you I, I promise you, if you're if you're listening to this and it doesn't matter if you live in Springfield, Missouri, I mean, if you don't That's live correct. here. You know, give us a call. Contact. We'll we'll get you in touch with Brian and uh, or his team, and uh, they just have a bunch of great folks that work over there. But if you are you interested in a golf car or some type of utility vehicle, give them a shot because I think they will probably give you the best deal out there. So well, and we can ship nationwide. And something a lot of folks don't realize: if you don't reside in a state that we do business, there's no sales tax. Oh, so if yeah. you live in Florida or Colorado or South Dakota. No sales tax, which you know, if you're talking a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar vehicle, that's a yeah, a pretty good chunk. That is it costs money to ship it there, but the tax usually is more than the sure shipping cost. Yeah, shipping is not really, I mean, yeah. reasonably sure. And then, and then if they want to do trades, you do that. Absolutely, yeah, you buy and sell all that Absolutely. kind of stuff. Just say so, so. Yeah, so so give it a shot. I would say if you you know you haven't uh, at least give them a call, and we'll give you an opportunity to give some information. We'll put it in the in the Appreciate podcast that. today too. So because uh, again, I. Uh, people are like, what are you doing? You guys, I was like, hey, listen, no, we can, we want to pay it forward, even to the point yeah. where, you know, we've been able to do some reinvesting back into your team. Uh, very small at this point. We hope we can do more. And, you know, and one of the things that we're doing for a lot of our, our partners, you know, if they have veterans on their team, you know, that we want to continue to offer deepen services and and products and resources to absolutely you know to the veterans especially on your team and, and whether the veterans or not you know we were here to help you but uh, that's what i love you said it partner it's it's yeah. a partnership and i i love that relationship yeah that's awesome we do too we do too so just real quick i i, I gotta just going back just a hair because i this intrigues me because i i think about the story you know we're really all about story mm. you know at the worst journey um you know hence the journey you know trying to help people understand and really connect with where they are, where they're going, what's God's plan for their life. Uh, we've had other guests, you know, uh, that have come in, uh, you know, Scar from, you know, the B2 Squadron yeah. pilot and Jonathan Gerard, who's another business here in town, you know, telling his story and so on. 
but there's a theme and it's really fun to watch this. So what I'm thinking in terms of when you started, when you're, when you left Walgreens that day, going, going back here in your story and you started your very first day at Clear Creek, you know, and maybe the first week or month or however you want to describe, what, what was that like? I mean, cause you'd never had that experience, right? I mean, you didn't really have any, any exposure to that type of work. So Talk about a little bit, because this will encourage our, our listeners, especially guys who are transitioning, because this is kind of a transition thing, right? What was that like for you as you engage? Was it, you know, were there, what were the, what were the highs and lows? And, and just talk about that, that, that initial. Yeah, I had a lot to learn. I, I had had some sales jobs previously, so I was not unfamiliar with sales. And the best role model in my life was my mother, who was a Century 21 agent in Marshville, Missouri. And she was one of the top Century 21 agents in the country year after year in this little town of 5,000 people. Um, she would actually go to their conferences as one of their keynote speakers. And really? again, this one woman in Marshfield, Missouri. Um, That's amazing. But I'd always learn from her. It's not about selling them what you want to sell them. It's, it's trying to find find out what they want and and find that for them. I mean, and that's yeah. kind of the, the approach we teach our, our sales team is that consultative selling approach. Meet the need. Uh, meet the need. It's yeah. 100%. Um, but I had a lot to learn. I didn't know anything about golf cars. I'm not mechanically minded. So I had a lot to learn on, on that end. And to be honest with you, it was kind of, you know, thir- young thirties. I was still a, a little bit of a knucklehead, maybe a lot of a knucklehead <laughs> in those days. So I wasn't, you know, responsible, like, sure. Like I'd like to think that I am now. Yeah. Um, didn't have the maturity for probably the opportunity that I had. And I remember I'd been there like a year and a half and Mark Ringenberg, the owner at the time came in one day and stood in front of me and just said, I don't think this is working. And I literally thought, I mean, it was probably 50, 50 at that point, whether I was going to keep the job beyond that day. Wow. And what, well, and what was the reason behind that? Is it, um, he said, I just don't, I don't see the results. I don't see the customers, you know, relating to you or, or whatever. And I honestly hadn't sold anything to a golf course yet. And whatever I said, it must've been the right thing. I, I think I basically said something along the time that I'm not that flashy, charismatic, high energy salesperson. I'm a relationship builder. Mm-hmm. And it takes time, you know, it takes time to build relationship and trust. Um, whatever yeah. I said worked, got me, got, bought me some time. And, <laughs> and literally, I think it was within uh, weeks of then, yeah. I made my first big sale as a new golf course at Lake of the Ozarks, bought 72 golf cars and some utility vehicles, and it just snowballed from there. So again, I, I was give, it, was it, was that like a whoosh, oh, moment abs- or, yeah. or was it like, no, I knew this was going to happen. You had confidence or, you know, or a little of both maybe. Um, Probably more the relief, okay. honestly, I think. Yeah. And again, I, you know, I wasn't walking with, with the Lord like I am today sure. at that time. And, you know, I was leaning on myself, not on yeah. God's provision. But um, I think that's one of those moments where God was was there and did, didn't realize it at the time, but yeah. moved me along in the right direction because I, I, I believe where I'm supposed to be, I am where I'm supposed to be. So, yeah. 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 You know. Definitely. It's a, it's yeah. a huge fit. And, and now, as you run the company, it's it's fun to watch you invest that that kind of DNA across the board, which is really evident. The moment you walk in the door, you know, of any of the facilities you guys have, it's really it's pretty amazing. It's one thing I appreciate. I mean, there's to me thinking about capitalism in America is it's a wide open door. You get to do anything you want, but like you said, if if you're about the customer, and you know, it's one thing to say that, and it's another thing to actually implement those types of sure. things. And you guys, you sense that, you feel it. So you guys have done a great job with that. I appreciate that. And I, I think we take it a step further. It's not just about the customer, it's about our employees. And, you know, we, we are not successful without the people around us and mm-hmm. the teamwork and support and mm-hmm. and all that. So we, we really try to invest very heavily in our, and funny, you mentioned that. We, I had breakfast with a pastor friend of mine this morning and um, he works with Life Church and they've mm-hmm. gone from their first campus, I think, in 1995 or 1996 to 45. So 45 and 30 years is pretty exponential growth, too. Yes, and, it is. And how they kind of assimilate that DNA from one location to the next as they continue to add churches. And we, we do a lot of the same things. It was encouraging to hear that, that we're taking the same steps because that, that DNA is critical for, especially when you're not there every day. You yeah. know, if you're in Clinton, Missouri, Wichita, Kansas, and we, we try to get to those places as much as we can, but we're trusting people to to carry the flag, you yep. know, 365 days a year. Um, so, yeah. DNA culture, you know, it's it's important. And it's not easy yeah. either. There's a little bit of an intentionality that You've goes with that. you got to be very intentional. Yeah. Absolutely. I think sometimes when, uh, and we talk a lot to military members, you know, when they, when they make that transition from military to civilian, um, and you know as well, we've talked about this, and I know this has been something that, 
uh, has been, I mean, maybe even a concern in your heart. I know we've talked about this even off, off, offline, just you and me personal in our relationship. And I've just appreciated, hey, you know, praying for these guys. Yeah. It's good to know, you know, because sometimes we don't realize some of the challenges they face. But as they're making that transition, it's they have a culture, a DNA. You know, um, I think most military people who have had an experience that has been positive in the military, it's some of the things that they miss is the, you know, the camaraderie sure. and the mission, you know, feeling like you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And and uh, the fact that, you know, when you work hard or you wear your, you know, you wear your resume on your, you know, right yeah. here on your on your heart, you know, or on your sleeves. Um, and, and not to say that there are challenges. I mean, I, I, listen, I can talk to every, I don't care if you're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, it doesn't matter. I, you, I, I can remember the stuff that was like, are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> you know, there's, and it's that way in every organization. Sure. But at the end of the day, when you feel like, hey, but, you know, I have been uh, a part of something that's been pretty significant or I have been able to contribute something that's been really great, or these are the takeaways, even if it's just I've learned so much about leadership, organization, not just what to do, but what not to do, and so on. Um, but taking that whole thing back into, like, say they come to not work for you, you yeah. know, uh, wow. You know, what we encourage them is, hey, don't think that you can't take that culture and and make a culture that you're going into. You got to learn their culture, but you can also take some great right. stuff, you know, into that. So it's hugely intentional. So on that note, you know, so talk to us a little bit about the employees. Uh, what what's what's the ideal employee for you? And then and and do uh, how do veterans fit into that? And I want to segue into then your heart for veterans. So yeah. maybe start with uh, you know, what's the future? Are you are you guys a veteran friendly kind of group? We are very much <laughs> a veteran friendly kind of group. And, Which I do. That was yeah, a loaded question. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate you teeing that up for yeah, me. But yeah, yeah if we get. Uh, if we post a position and we get 10 applicants or 20 applicants, if there's military experience on that resume, that immediately goes to the top of the list for nice. us because we believe in the character and the values, those core things that you just mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, we believe they're going to have the DNA that matches our DNA. So absolutely, um, that's a big thing for us. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we have probably 20 plus people on our sales team now. I think maybe one or two of those people had sales experience prior to coming to work for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't believe in the experience so much as the person, if they have the character, um, if there's somebody that's going to embrace our values, our culture, et cetera, mm -hmm. we feel like we can teach them to sell our way or to do the things in any position, not just sales, but we can teach them the rest. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Cause it's just, it's more than sales. It's, you've yeah. got, you got all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. So let me, let me just pause for a second. Cause this is huge, Ryan. I, 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 and you probably maybe aren't even aware of just how powerful it is for maybe someone to hear that because we get over and over and over again. Yeah. People in the civilian world, they don't, I have nothing to offer. Or, you know, I'm just a guy who was in the military. I don't know anything. Or, man, I was in for so long. And how does that translate to a civilian type of expression? And, and I think they have this automatic assumption that a guy like you, a person who is, you know, a very accomplished business guy, uh, is going to look at them and go, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have any desire to talk to you. You, you, you got nothing, you know, which is not the case. And sure. so, no. so for you, for, for you to say, Man, if there's military there, that goes right to the top. If you're listening, please hear that because, and you're not you're not uh, alone in this. I mean, we talk to many many business owners that they they really do appreciate not the just the service that that person provided, you know, as a military member, but the things that they potentially and I'll say potentially because you got to you got to bring it right. right? You got to bring it I mean, just because you're in the military doesn't mean you're going to be a person right. of character, but you're going to be a person who has been around that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm going to guess, if, if you would, I'm, in fact, I'm not even going to guess. I'm going to ask you, tell me what maybe would be the top, the top uh, characteristics that you feel would be super important that sometimes you think that those military folks maybe have an edge up on. What, what comes to mind? Um, it, it's really simple stuff. I mean, honesty, okay. being, being genuine, being straightforward, being transparent. Yeah. Um, you know, work ethic obviously matters with us. It's just very simple Huge. core core values. Show up to work. Yeah. <laughs> do what you say, you know, say what you're going to do and then do what you say. Yeah. Uh, follow through with that kind of stuff. And yeah, uh, we like people that ask questions. I love an interview where people ask questions like we're here to interview you, but you're here to interview us too. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's good to do your homework on a company before you, you go in for an interview and have some questions for them as well. Even questions that say like, not just like how much does this pay, but. No, hey, yeah, absolutely. You know, about the business, about the position, yeah. about growth, about. What are the opportunities? You yeah, know, some if, of the questions you're asking, like how yeah. do we get from where we are today um, from where we started? That's awesome. I want, I want to go back to like you, you talk about interviews and, and I think 
if somebody's in the interview process, they probably are going to sit down with somebody who has boxes that they're going to check. Mm-hmm. And and you may not fit some of those boxes. I, I wouldn't fit some of the boxes for some positions. Mm-hmm. Um, but if somebody's just checking boxes, that may not be a good place for you to be anyway. Good point. Um, but I think a, a good interview is somebody that really wants to get to know you and mm-hmm. find out what brought you to them. And can can you be a good fit for them? Can they be a good fit for you? And it's, it's more personal than checking boxes. Yeah, and I think I'm sensing that whole spirit of partnership going there too with Absolutely. your employee, employees too. That's pretty cool because I think a lot of times businesses will say, well, what can we get out of this person? Yeah. But you're saying, no, how can this be a win-win? You know, they're going to obviously pour in as an employee, but then what can we do to pour back into yeah. them? And at the end of the day, I mean, if they, if they become part of a family, sure. that's a pretty cool deal. Uh, and I know that's your DNA. So, um, man, I... It's funny. I, I'm just. It's. It's. I'm not leaving the warrior's journey. So don't misunderstand this. But I would say that, boy, if something happened and uh, you know all of a sudden you know God had a plan, I would come work for you in a heartbeat. <laughs> I would love to work for your company. We, we'd put you to work. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. yeah. Clay, yeah. The whole, your whole team here. I, mean, yeah. I, I, uh, I honor your your entire team. I mean, you guys, everybody I met here is phenomenal. So I. I see the same approach yeah. and results with the, your your DNA here as well. Well, it'd just yeah. be a fun place to go too, a fun place to to be a part of because it it, yeah, it's, it's really we sell great. fun. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly, exactly. So, so anyway, I just I hope that if you're listening, and I know you guys are hiring, you know, and uh, there there are opportunities. Uh, so, you know, on that note, uh, man, let us know. You know, if uh, we can make connections, if you're listening and you'd like to learn more about Clear Creek, we're going to be able to help you with that. Absolutely. So. You can reach out to us through the website, through Warriors mm-hmm. Journey, either mm-hmm. one. But, mm-hmm. you know, we've got 12 locations. We're across four states now, and I wouldn't – I'm not going to say that we're done growing by any means. So, right. Yeah. You, you may be in 50 states before you know it. Boy. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> a big thing, but you never know, right? So, you never know. You never know. Okay, so so – one last transition here, because I, w- I want to make sure we get this in, because this to me is probably the most important thing um, that I would like our listeners to hear, because your heart, it's so deep, it runs so deep from a patriotic perspective. Uh, I know that's just, not just you, but also Jerry and, and uh, you know, all the all the other folks that, that are part of your executive team, uh, even Laura. I walk in and Laura's mm-hmm. like, hey, Laura, hey, yeah. she's just like, you know, they're just like, man, you guys, we love you guys, man, we're so glad we're a part of, you know, what we're you know, being able to extend. And so can you just talk a little bit about why why the Warriors journey? What what makes that partnership so important to you guys? Oh man, there's there's a lot of things that uh that come to mind with that. I mean, you know, first and foremost, you know, I think of the sacrifice that our troops make. Um not only for our country, but the sacrifice within their own families. Um, you know, that that resonates very deeply mm. with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just, I'm a big believer in in supporting anyone that's willing to make sacrifices for other people, and you know, the military is willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for for people that they don't know. Quite often, I mean, yeah, they're mm-hmm. protecting their own families and friends and whatnot, but mm-hmm. they're they're serving people they don't know all across the country, and you know, a lot of times they're serving people that have completely skewed views towards the military and towards mm-hmm. you know. Those kind of things. So don't appreciate uh, the fact. Don't, don't appreciate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't appreciate it at all. Um, mm. And I think also, you know, with with Warrior's journey, just to be candid and transparent, there were times in my life where I hit some pretty low places and didn't know if I wanted to continue living and breathing on this earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I learned of the suicide intervention impact, mm-hmm. you know, I just I believe my life was worth being saved, and you know, God had a plan and a purpose for me, and I believe that for every other person that walks this earth. Absolutely. Um, so I just think it's incredible that the turnaround and the, the impact that you guys have with with those folks. Yeah, and you and you've helped us, you know, to to expand that. It's interesting. I was looking at stats the other day, you know, back uh, right before we pulled out of Afghanistan. You know, just a couple of years ago, we were right around the two hundred eighty nine or so interventions, and then uh, just looked at our stats this last week, and now we're over 2,050, wow. you know, I think 2,059 is what we've had now, direct interventions. And, and the fact that we still haven't had one person that we've lost, that we've engaged in, awesome. but it's a miracle. It really is. And it's not it's not us. It's, it's the fact that we're, I think we're giving what I would consider to be a, a very robust relational engagement, talking about emotional fitness and physical fitness, um, you know, social fitness, mental fitness, you know, all of that goes in with with, uh, even the mental health side. 
but most importantly, the whole spiritual fitness too, tying all that together, giving opportunities for people to explore that. So, and the fact that you're a business that isn't afraid of that. I, I'm so, so grateful for that, you know, that, that you're, you're willing to not only say, wow, that's okay with us. If you talk about even a spiritual component, but we're like, yeah, man, go, that's awesome. You know? So there's just so much in our country that's so weird, yeah. you know, and so controversial that shouldn't be. No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. So I just appreciate that. And, and thank you. I wish I could remember who it was that invited me to play in the Warriors during the golf tournament the first yeah. year I played. Yeah. Um, because I would like to give them a hug and a thank you. <laughs> I didn't know what I was coming to. I didn't know what I was experiencing. I'm I'm a golfer. I was going to play in a golf tournament, and somebody else was paying for it. So it all it all sounded great. Why, right? yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, but man, I was so moved that first year. And what was guys, it? What was it that 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 brought uh, that about? Well, I mean, you had Gold Star families speaking. Yeah. Um, but but everybody that spoke and you could just sense the the passion the continuity, um, just the genuineness of what you guys were doing. It wasn't just about raising money. It was not really about raising money at all. It was about mm -hmm. the impact that you could make with the dollars that you did raise. It was about pouring into those family into those troops. Mm -hmm. um, it, it resonated. It was no no escaping it that day. And from there, I wanted to get my own team in the event. And you know mm -hmm. our sponsorship started with just putting a team in the next year and right. just gone from there. And I don't think it's any coincidence that we were neighbors either. I just look at God's providence on this whole thing. I agree. The introduction to the golf tournament, being neighbors with you um, at your previous location. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, and the impact has been so great too. I mean, just your input, you know, serving on our committee then, helping us to take take our event, that particular event, to another level. You've helped us with our gala, you know, giving us ideas, introducing us to other people, networking, and all of a sudden it's like this – you know, it's like, again, it's like this family feel, and I love that. And and I was telling my wife the other night, uh, telling Cayenne that, you know, we're so blessed. And we're just so blessed to be able to not just – this isn't about an organization. I mean, we are an organization, but but it's really a – it's a movement. You know, it's a movement of people who are saying – and I love the fact that we have people like you that – I mean, you've never served, yeah. you know, in the military. But you're serving now, and you're serving in a way that's very, very powerful. And the fact that you can recognize the sacrifices of those others, and I know you know you've got family. You, your grandfather served. And my grandfather served, and uh, my mother's father. So yeah, both. I mm -hmm. guess grandpa's on both sides. Okay, um, served. I don't know a lot about my mom's dad, what he did, but um, my my mother's father, my grandfather on my mother's side, um, served in World War II. Amazing. He was on a ship. I think he was a cook actually, on a ship in the South Pacific. That's awesome. But, yeah. Hey, so let me let me just kind of leapfrog a little rabbit hole on on one side here before we wrap up here this morning because you just mentioned something that is another big thing that we're dealing with is like yeah I was in the military but you know I was just a cook I was in the military but I just I worked in finance or I was in the military but I just you know I was a logistics guy or I was this or that and they because they were not on what we would consider to be the front line when we think of military people we think of you know the soldier. Right. The Marine, uh, Air Force, they don't even think that's the military, uh, right. <laughs> unless you're a pilot, you know, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, the combat side of it, I mean, we all know that at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about, you know, raising up a, a group of people who can fight and win wars, you know, to, to establish a security for our nation and maybe even security in the world. But these folks that do all, by the way, they make up the bulk of the military are yeah. all these logistical, logistical jobs. Just your opinion, you know. What's that? You did, you know. How, did, when you say, "Hey, I pre appreciate your sacrifice," do they count? Absolutely. And you know, we lost my grandfather uh, five, six years ago now. But I, I'd hear the stories. I mean, he was on a ship and he was a cook. But that ship came under fire, and when that ship was under attack, it was kind of all hands on deck. And yeah. He wasn't down there cooking eggs at the time. He'd have to get up and help out with whatever was going on. I mean, yeah. So he was at risk as much as anybody else, certainly. And I think about it from a business perspective. If if we had the same mindset within the walls of Clear Creek, mm -hmm. um, that only the people that sell golf cars matter, whatever. But well, who's going to work on them? Yep. Who's going to deliver them? Who's going to pick them up when they break down? Yeah, um, sell parts for them. I mean, every part is integral to the success. Who's of, doing the books? Absolutely. Yeah, who's doing logistics? Yes. And yeah, you bet. I mean, that's really important. Yeah. I'm thankful, and I, I we know that. But I, I I hope if you're listening today, please let that resonate. You know, if you had an MOS or uh, in the Air Force, you know, in AFSC, uh, you know, whatever your job was in the military, and if it wasn't a being a trigger puller or a combat arms, 
did not in any way lessen the effect and the con- contribution that you've made to our country. Absolutely. And uh, I just want to stress that again, too. Now, we do. We work with a lot of, you know, everything from special operations to, you know, combat trauma. And a lot of what we have done has been through working through areas of moral injury, post-traumatic stress, and, and things dealing with that kind of war trauma. But listen, it, it's it's everybody, you know, everybody. And so uh, we don't distinctively make those separations That's either. Awesome. So, so I appreciate, I appreciate yeah. you sharing that because I think as for someone hearing a civilian say that, because, you know, we hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I say thank you for your service. And a lot of veterans are like, yeah, whatever. You know, I didn't really do anything. Yeah. Or... Or I did a lot, and if you knew what I did, you probably wouldn't be thanking me. You might think I'm some kind of a monster, you know. It's like which isn't the case either, sure. you know. So I I just appreciate you you verbalizing that. So, so so talk just a little bit uh, about as we kind of transition um, moving to kind of the backside of this conversation, but in in the sense of your commitment to to veterans, you know, overall, you know, summarize that, Brian. You know, for you as a as a person, a company, you know, is there anything that you would want to just kind of talk about as it relates to veterans in general or even the military in general? Um again, you know, we've talked about recognizing, appreciating the the sacrifice, um, and just love the core values. One of the things I, I love my father, my my dad's my my favorite person on this earth, mm-hmm. uh, one of my best friends certainly. And uh, he always makes these statements like, if I was president, I would do da 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 da. But one of the things he always said, if I was president, everybody would have to serve um, at least one year, maybe two years, everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hey, if Brian Cheever was president, everybody would serve as well. I just think it's such a, a, a an honoring thing for your country to give back, mm-hmm. um, an honoring thing for, for the people around you. It's, it honors the people that have gone before you that have served. Mm-hmm. And uh, just again, Culturally, the DNA you talk about, the the discipline, the the hard work, the the many, 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 many can't even. I'm gonna stop now, but there's so many attributes, obviously, that sure. that go along with serving in the military, and uh, those so, things would matter in life. I mean, again, there's mm-hmm. a reason why when we see ten resumes and one person has military experience, they go to the top of the list for us because we know the qualities mm-hmm. and the characters that come along with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it'd be great if everybody had that experience. I think it would make a would would make our country a little bit different, maybe. You know, ultimately. So rewinding, do do you do you wish you would have done that? Absolutely, early in the years? yeah. yeah so. I, I wish, yeah. If so I, if I could you, go back in time, I would. Yeah, you, you would. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be bitter about that if you had to. <laughs> no, no, I would embrace it and be honored to. to to do it. Absolutely. So funny you say that, you know, I, I did a couple of years of college before I ended up joining. And, and, uh, when I did join, it was, um, you know, it was a myriad of different reasons, but when I got into it, it was like, man, I, I, I was the same way, you know, I was 20 nothing years old and I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or didn't really have a, a real solid perspective about my purpose in life. And I'm telling you, you know, the military experience it, you know, for me, it just helped me to, to, to just put myself in a position where God could kind of shape those characteristics yeah. for me. Sometimes shaping it, you know, somebody was shaping it for right. me, you know, telling me what to do, being a certain thing, but being a part of a team and learning about interrelational, um, like work ethics. And, you know, I remember I, 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 I didn't get in trouble, you know, quote unquote, you know, my whole military career, other than there was a few small things and those things were like devastating. It was like, Whoa, man, I, you know, I, I remember one morning, this guy beating on my door in the dormitory. He's like, Hey, he goes, you, I'm coming over to, to wake you. What, what are you doing, man? You're like, you're supposed to be at guard mount right now. You're supposed to be reporting for duty. I'm like, what? You know, for some crazy reason, my, my alarm didn't go off or something. And I ended up being like 15 minutes late. And it was, it was horrible. But you know, it's funny before I joined the military and be like, nah, eh, whatever, you know, right. it wasn't that big of a deal, you know, but it, that instilled in me the sense of duty and the right. sense of, you know, uh, responsibility. And right. it was, it was really cool. And I'm really thankful for that. You know, and the things that I gained from the military that didn't fix everything in my life, but it, but it certainly gave me a perspective. So did you have to do push ups or run, run after that? Was there? No, I actually got, uh, I got a letter of reprimand from my, from my, uh, supervisor and, and, uh, and, and it was funny cause I was a pretty squared away guy for the most part. And, uh, you know, I, I made below the zone for the rank. I, I actually excelled in, in all my, you know, for the most part. Right. And so he gave me a letter of reprimand, and then it was about a month later he pulled me in and he said, hey, he's like, I'm not going to – this is coming out of your record. He's like, you know, I said, you have no idea. It was, I mean, almost in tears. I'm like, I'm just – he goes, you know what? That's great. I deserve that. You know, it's like you're right. It it, it was one of those things that I just – it just it haunted me, you know, because it's like that's just not 
who I was, yeah. and I didn't want to be that guy, you know, because we did. We had some guys in our in our squadron, guys in our in our in our group in our flight that that were a little what we would call substandard, you know. And it's like, man, I don't want to be on that team. I right. want to be on the team that's not, you know. Right. And, and I was always striving. So, and he knew that. But it was he said, well, this is a good lesson for you, you know, and maybe a good lesson in life. And he was a good, he was a great supervisor, you know. So, um, and even if it would have carried over, I deserved it, you know. It's right. like you you kind of take. It's like you own it. It was right. about ownership. So. Yeah. So anyway, didn't didn't have to do push-ups. <laughs> now, now here's the deal. <laughs> that's because you were in the Air Force. You know, that's what people are going to uh, say now. If you're in the Marine Corps, you would have been uh, you been right. smoked during the Army or whatever. But uh, and things are different now. I mean, I'm looking at my son over here, who's uh, who's just recently making his way out of the Army, and I think Clay would say maybe things are a little bit different now. Maybe not quite as. <laughs> not, we've lost a little bit of our customs and courtesies in the military. Uh, I think we've gotten a little softer. I think our culture has been a little softer, which is kind of sad. Right. So, but um, I'm hoping we can get back, you know, to. I hope so too. Yeah, because it, yeah. it, it is it is proven to be, I think, a, just all, like you say, you know, and as a person who's a business guy, so appreciate your perspective on that. So, man, thank you. All right. So, Brian, any any other thoughts? I, I just have one question left that I want to ask you that I always ask our guests, but uh, any other thoughts you want to add before I jump into I'm that? I'm so appreciative of this opportunity. And again, appreciative of being a part of Warrior's Journey this last couple of years. Just, made some great friendships, some great relationships. Um, you know, we want to invest more and more as the years go by. Yeah. And uh, again, not just giving of money, but giving of time. And and uh, it's just an honor to give back. Yeah. Well, and even recently, your willingness to give back in a huge way by serving on our executive board. Yeah, too, I'm so which, excited about that. Yeah, we, we are was, so excited to have you. Yeah. Just We just uh, had Brian join our leadership team now. And uh, man, super excited about that! And uh, you're already adding a, a whole a whole another layer. You're going to take us to another level. We're excited. I hope so. <laughs> hope I can do my part. Certainly, have no yeah. doubts. No doubts whatsoever. So, okay. So, last question. You know, if you consider this as a huge platform, you know, for us to get in front of military members, and so you've got a voice right now in this in this moment. No, not to put you on the spot. But if you were to just give a, maybe a, a word of encouragement, some type of a summary or a thought or something that you would want to make sure that all of our active duty military members, veterans, and their families, you know, what would what would you want to say to them? Um, first thing I would say is thank you. I would like to look each one of them in the eye and, and shake their hand and say thank you. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of folks like me that, that didn't serve that, that support you in, in ways that maybe you don't see every day, but we are so appreciative. Um, I know it's part of my daily prayers, praying for our military, for their safety, and not just that, you know, praying for their families too. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that a lot of these folks are away from their families for prolonged periods of time. So we pray, I pray for the soldiers, I pray for their families. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things you, you know, I respect about Jerry. You know, every time we pray corporately, whether he's praying at lunch with four of us or if our team's praying, the, the entire Clear Creek organization, we always pray for um, our military families and friends. And That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just so thankful. I mean, we're, we're, we're blessed to have you serving our country and protecting us, and we honor you. No, that's awesome. And I, I know that you mean that sincerely. And I know that you know the ugly side of things, too. We've, you've, you've, you've asked those questions, and you, you get what we do here. And I know you've heard the stories. And so uh, if you're listening to this and you're a military member, don't, please don't, don't pass that off as like, oh, yeah, that's just a pat answer. I know that's not a pat answer for no. you. So, and I know there are a lot of people like you out there. So be encouraged, you know, if you're, you're there as a, uh, whether you're a veteran or currently serving, uh, just know that there are people that we, you know, we got your six, you know, we yeah, got your back, absolutely. you know, and, and it's a, it's an important part of the process. So that's awesome. Appreciate that. So Brian, thank you. Finally, Hey, listen, Clear Creek, uh, golf car and utility vehicles website. What's the website for you guys? ClearCreekGolfCar.com. Okay, so Clear Creek. Clear is in clear, uh, clear water. Clear vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah clear the water. The choice is clear. There you go. Yeah. All right, Clear Creek. Uh, golfcar.com. Car, no T. Car, yeah, golf right. car. Yeah, car. yeah not cart. We didn't get into that, too. Right. You know, it's like it's not a cart. It's a car. <laughs> you pull a cart, you drive a car. There you go. Okay, you I go. love it. I love it. So it's great. So if you wonder why maybe they even cost a little more than you thought they would, because <laughs> it's a vehicle. That's right. It it's is a, a vehicle. It is a vehicle. So that's great, Brian. And it's been a joy to have you. Uh, joy to. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate Enjoyed being it. here. Yeah. Yep. So, hey, listen, and, and please reach out to us. We'll get you in contact if you'd like to talk to uh, to Brian or if you want to get in touch with Clear Creek about anything, actually. Anything. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know love that to they hear would, from you. Yeah, I'd love to see or, or stop by one of their stores Absolutely. and we can give you information on what those will look like.
located. Uh, but thanks for joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to ha having you back next time. And uh, again, please know that if there's anything we can do, any way that we can help, any way we can assist, it could be a it could be a crisis, but it could just be a question. You know, everything in between. So don't hesitate to contact us at twj.org. We we'll look forward to seeing you. And until next time, we hope you have a, uh, just have a, a wonderful rest of the day. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Warrior's Journey podcast. Be sure to leave a review and to ask questions, give or get involved. Visit twj.org today. The Warrior's Journey, warriors helping warriors heal invisible wounds.